Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner from Come On Now, the podcast. This is your host, Rudy Rodriguez Chaumont. As you can see, I have a different background, and the camera might not be as good a quality because I'm running off my laptop. I am currently at the hospital as my wife is giving birth, probably sometime tonight or tomorrow morning. So, of course, I am in the hospital, unlike some basketball players that don't believe that you should be at the birth of your child. But that's for another story. But I am here to give you a quick preview of UFC 302, which is taking place tomorrow night at, uh, it's in Newark. What is it, the Prudential Center, I think it's called? Yeah, the Prudential Center. You know, featuring Islam Makachev, the lightweight champion, versus Dustin the Diamond Poirier. This is a very, very intriguing fight, uh, exciting fight. Dustin Poirier earned this title shot by starching out Benoit Saint-Denis in Miami a few months ago, and then Charles Oliveira lost to Armand Sarukian, and then Justin Gaethje got slept by Max Holloway. Armand Sarukian turned down the offer to fight Makachev because he said it was too soon. Bad decision, in my opinion. But Dustin Poirier doesn't turn down fights, and he is ready to throw down. Dustin Poirier has a resume that is as good as anyone in the history of MMA. He has fought everyone. He's fought Connor twice. I'm sorry, three times. He's fought Max Holloway twice. He's fought Khabib. He's fought Gaethje twice. Twice. He's fought Eddie Alvarez twice. You name the fighter, he's fought Oliveira, Chandler. He has fought everyone. So from a from a perspective of resume there's no question that dustin poirier's resume far outweighs that of islam makachev however makachev has that quality that has always given dustin poirier difficulties that is a relentless wrestler who is going to continue to try to take him down this is a, a matchup of styles and a matchup of whose style you know reigns supreme Dustin Poirier wants to keep the fight standing, although he does have a history of trying to jump guillotines, and it can get him in trouble. It didn't get him in trouble versus St. Denis. It did get him in trouble versus Khabib. And in this situation here, it could be very, very dangerous for him if he was to jump a guillotine and not successfully choke out and submit Makachev. Because if Makachev is on top, he's very, very top-heavy, and he will make it very difficult for Poirier to get up. That said, we saw Alexander Volkanovsky get up multiple times in their first fight. And uh, it's just a matter of Poirier's will, want to. And unlike the fight when he had against Charles Oliveira, where he basically gave up top position for the duration of an entire round because he said he was conserving energy, you could tell it was a bad, bad situation for him in that fight after he pretty much dominated most of round one in that fight. That said, obviously, this is his last go round. So if he loses, he's not going to do this again. He will, hang the, he will hang up his gloves. However, he has lightning power in his hands. He can put Makachev out if he connects. And at the end of the day, if he does connect and he keeps this fight standing, Dustin Poirier has a very, very good chance of coming away with the title. Of course, Makachev is a massive minus 675 favorite. I think that's a pretty huge number um, and really is kind of insulting because Dustin Poirier is a damn good fighter. And we haven't seen a whole lot from Makachev in terms of at the lightweight division. Yes, he's beaten Volkanovski twice. I thought Volkanovski won that first fight. He did have a very impressive showing versus Charles Oliveira. However, there's... He has no one else that he's fought in the top five. He hasn't fought Gaethje. You know, he hasn't fought Chandler. Um, yeah, so it, it's, he, ha- I mean, he did fight Sarukian and he did beat him. That was years, a few years ago now <clears throat> in a rather close fight. My heart says Dustin Poirier. My brain says Makachev will win the fight because he'll wrestle. Uh, we shall see what happens. 
I would love to see Dustin Poirier walk away with the belt and see him fight again. And I think that's where you have one of two possibilities. If Poirier is to win, I think he has to give a fight to Justin Gaethje. Remember, they're one on one. Gaethje should be in this fight right now, except he did the UFC a solid and defended the BMF belt against Max Holloway when he really didn't have to. He should have just, I mean, realistically, he's a fighter, but he probably could have just waited. And if he had waited, he'd be fighting right now against Makachev. And the other option, of course, is potentially a fourth fight with Conor McGregor. I don't know how much that interests Poirier outside of the money involved. But when you look at that fight, it is obviously an exciting possibility. Although, poor, uh, Connor has to get past Michael Chandler at the end of June 1st. So those are a couple of ifs. Can't wait for this fight. It's popping off tomorrow night. Pay-per-view car starts at 10 o'clock. In the co-main event, you have Sean Strickland against Paulo Costa. This is a great fight. I, I, I love the fight. Paulo Costa had a good showing versus Robert Whitaker, although he lost that fight. He looked, I mean, he cuts so much damn weight. I don't know why Costa doesn't fight at 205. He looks sickly when he's at 185 at weigh-ins. For Strickland, it's a huge, huge fight because a win gets him right back into the title picture. <clears throat> I don't think a win for Costa gets him in any title picture. It'd just be a really good win. But Strickland, for him, it gets him back in the title picture coming off the, the very close loss to Duplessis. And uh, depending on what happens with Robert Whitaker and Kamzat Chemaev, uh this month as well, in June, we will, you know, whoever wins that fight, that's, that's a possibility that if Whitaker wins and Strickland wins, that Strickland's going to get another a title shot, whether it's versus Izzy or Duplessis. You also have, <clears throat> and that, that fight I expect to be a stand-up fight. They're going to throw hands. Strickland's going to talk a lot of junk. Costa's going to talk some junk. Slick his hair back as he always does when he's fighting. It'll be fun. Then you have at middle at middleweight, Kevin Holland versus Michael Ola Zizek. Holland, I hope he shows up in fights, unlike that Michael Ben and Page fight. This is a this is he's a huge favorite. I be <clears throat> I have a hard time <clears throat> I have a hard time making him a favorite against anyone right now after the way he performed versus MVP. But he is a big favorite. And then there is a fight on this card. They have a, they have rearranged the main card because initially Jalton Almeida and Alexander Romanov were on the main card, but now it looks like they flipped it and made Nico Price and Alex Morono on this and put it on the main card. People, uh, Nico Price is a very very exciting fighter. He takes shots. He, he forgets that the idea is to hit and not be hit, but because he gets hit and gives it back. He makes for a very exciting fighter and puts on very exciting fights. He has already fought Morono, and they had a, a slugfest some years back. Price did win via stoppage at the end of round two. However, it was overturned because he tested positive for, what was it he tested positive for? <clears throat> Marijuana. <laughs> tested positive for being high. Like, come on. I never saw marijuana help someone win a fight, but he tested positive for marijuana. And this was in 2017. Uh, he is coming off of three losses in his last four fights. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think this is going to be a, a lot of fun to watch these two throw hands again. And then you do have the Jalton Almeida fight on the, on the undercard. So overall, it's an exciting card. Check it out. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about this car? What do you think? Who do you think is going to win the Makachev Poirier fight? Strickland, Strickland, Costa, etc. Remember, like, follow, subscribe to us on Come On Now podcast. Come On Now podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and on uh, Twitter X. Come On Now pod. Of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We thank you for your continued support. See you soon. Come on now.